So last week, um, I think we did what was the day last week, 21st. So you saw that I pushed maybe ultra.caching module, um, which is to do business data caching and uh, and that works. Um, then this one, which was not yet finished, because I had some uh, binary issues. The issue was that it needed a um, um, binary redirect for some other uh, assemblies. Which ones? Mm, these ones, HTTP formatting and stemwide HTTP, because they have new versions. Five done one two. So this works now. It's using uh, MVC five dot one. Um, then, then, uh, yeah, this was a fix I did during the the status last week. This has been done by Daniel on Wondertex. Uh, so specialized implementation on iMachine M provider. The issue being that on Azure, if you were using the task list module, the task list was using the, the machine, <coughs> sorry, the machine name. And uh, on Azure, you need a specific implementation. So he created a custom implementation for Azure and changed the um, host config for the um, Azure solution to take this implementation instead of the default one. Okay. Um, this one by Bertrand fixing some things. Yep, the closing tag. Okay, thank you. I don't know how you found this one. Must have uh, I... seen a bug. Uh, I inspected the DOM and I found some weird shit in there. So okay. I tracked it back to this. Cool. Uh, Brett. Ah, yeah, I, I, I was not sure you had the right access, so specific committed your work. So, <clears throat> actually, I wonder what it was. I, I saw the, the log, but I didn't see what it was. So, what is it about Navigation Manager? or HTTPS or slash and you added tell and mail to. I don't know what tell is. <laughs> I can just assume it. Mail to I know. In what context? It's a navigation. It's when we run, when we generate uh, some menu items. Support navigation items that have a tell to, a tell or mail to in the actual menu item. Yes, okay. Why tell I'm not FTP? Why tell? Is anyone using tell? Should there be then a, a generic way of doing that? Or do we need to define for security reasons which protocols we want to be there? Is already a tell link a security issue? I'm not sure. I will talk about it to someone here if there is a concern. <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, this is not pushed. This is just moving this line of code here because it doesn't make sense here, but there only. And uh, just a little change. Uh, this is a branch I have locally from uh, our dear friend Wahami. Uh, as known as Eric Schultz, <laughs> who created a PR to have SQLite support back. 
um, and uh, it works i tried it and as he's describing it's as it's very fast compared to sql c actually at least locally which i mean which i assume will be also remotely so it's pretty fast compared to sql c there is only one weirdness in the code it's not as bad he made it right so the issue is that sqlite doesn't, su doesn't support um schema alteration commands like uh, create new add new colon or delete colon or rename colon things like that okay or you can't uh, update a table in sqlite with the sql and we use it in the migrations. Actually, if you start from a brand new website, there I, I checked every migration, there is no path where we would uh, alter uh, an existing table in a new install, in a new setup, okay? But if you upgrade, there might be some alteration. So this, this might be an issue if you upgrade, well, you will not upgrade from SQL C now to SQLite with an existing database, it will be a new database. So there will not be an issue, but for later releases, that this is a concern. But what he did is that he implemented the, the interfaces we have in Orchard to override the behavior of those um, uh, commands. And he's actually parsed. So SQLite, everything I'm telling you, he, he explained to me. I didn't know about that. So SQLite contains the previous statements, some table, like, so it contains some schema tables where you can find the statements to create all the current tables. Like if you have a table named foo, there will be a create table foo statement in some uh, um, system tables in SQLite. So it's parsing those statements and evaluating the new commands we want to apply. Then upgrading this create table query uh, that defines in SQLite, um, create this new table and copy the data over the new table. And it preserves the foreign keys and the indexes. Uh, and he wrote this as part of another library called SQLite Outer Curve SQLite Parser. Okay? And Outer Curve SQLite Create Tree, um, which makes everything to work, even the migration. So it's, uh, it's kind of a, a, a key way of doing it, and it also requires NTLR to parse the statement. So it's a lot of new dependencies, but it works. So it's a it's a branch right now. Uh, we just have to merge it if we want to include SQLite in uh, in Orchard. And it did everything, even the the setup screen update. Um, I'm not sure that yeah maybe the tenant screen update needs to be uh, the tenant screen needs to be updated actually. Uh, that's possible. Uh, and I found an issue actually, Eric. Uh, I should have commented on your pull request. Uh, these, some binaries are copied uh, directly at the root of the of the folder if you pre-compile it. If you try to build a package, the a, a release package, um, it copies the some DLLs at the at the wrong location. Those one, I think. Okay. Does it, does it copy it to the, <coughs> to the root instead of the bin? It actually needs to. There's a bug in the way that uh, SQLite uh, looks for um, the native. Uh, interop libraries, mm -hmm. it actually has to be from the root. I, I don't know why they did it that way. That was a choice on their part. Um, this is weird. I will remember that. Maybe there's a way to teach it that. It's possible. I, I tried to work around. I couldn't figure out one. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll email the uh, the SQLite, the people who manage the SQLite.net interop and mm -hmm. see if they have some suggestions. You can also look into all chart history around okay. 2000, 2010 because we were using SQLite and it was working. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, so, one pull request. Um, <coughs> this one using a new API from the new SDK instead of using try catch. Um, so, cleaning. This was on 17x2. Then from Zoltan typo. Then from Zoltan uh, this morning again, uh, adding checks to InfoSet migration so it doesn't fail at least with default installation. Okay, thank you. Um, or oh, to see if the table exists or not. Okay, nice. Okay, great. Yeah, and there were some columns too uh, that uh, 
uh, original code was failing because of uh, nulls and stuff like that. I added some some checks for this too. Right, and some black blank lines too because it's good for the stats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> safely convert field to bool. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's actually interesting because there are uh, booleans should be, uh, as far as I know, stored in the database as uh, either as bits or or probably as integers. But I've seen them stored as strings, and then they can be nulls, and and that was failing sometimes. Ah, I see what you mean. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I give you another task because you are into it. Um, there's a PR from uh, Jeff uh, Jeff Umstead um, um, yeah. uh, to also create the migrations for the upgrade for the users. If you could just uh, take it, review it, see what could be, could be wrong, and test it, and push it, that would be nice. All right, sure. And I will mention your name in the release notes if you do that. Was a wise I want. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you, because this one it will be necessary for one at eight. Um, adding more checks and migration. Okay. Uh, adding content item existence check for content menu item parting from migration again. Next time, do we do one commit? Uh, it was two issue. Uh, um, this one, info set con the, my, the widget parts, widget adding content time existence check if widget. Everything was failing. Uh, yeah, so if you if you installed an orchard site on 1.7.x with mm -hmm. the default recipe, you couldn't upgrade it. Okay, good. Thank you. I never do that. I wrote the code uh, with a blindfold, like just to see if it would work. And this is. Oh yeah, because oh okay, this is the pull request. I, okay, and this is the, f the the stuff I fixed, and I also fixed some warnings when you were to build the um, the project in uh, in precompile, for instance, or from command line uh, at least. Uh, okay, that's it for uh, last week. Um, what else? Let me see. Um, Yep, that's it. So, I don't think the roadmap has changed a lot. Or chart project.net slash docs roadmap. <coughs> so, migrating to Okay, this one. <laughs> um, does anyone know about uh, if there will be a new version of ASP.NET MVC or not? And when? Don't smile, Bertrand. <laughs> ever? Is this what? another one of you your signals? Ever? <laughs> no, no, I'm just asking the question. What's public? I know what's private. I don't know what's public. So I'm asking a question. What do you know? So I don't tell anything in any way that you should not know. <laughs> You're basically saying that no, there isn't going to be one. I I haven't said Without that. Without saying it. I'm just no. <laughs> I, and I won't answer the question because this will ex explicitly say what I don't want to say. Uh, I heard this will really discontinue the war SPN stack. Looks around st what. So do you have, okay, you have no idea about anything actually. Christian is typing. <laughs> yeah, of course. I think the identity manager is to zero beta. Okay. Um, are you trying to? Okay, I assume this might be public. This thing. Okay, and that's it. No, nothing new about SPNet MVC. Okay, just to know. Um, so I will uh, edit this. I should have checked before actually. Ah. Um, where is this? Okay, done. And after 
upgrade. Okay, I see it done because it works now. Do you know what's new in Razor 3.1? Why is it a 3.1? I asked, I've been told bug fixes, so there is new, no new feature. I was like, ah, oh, I would like new features. I don't know what, but. Um, done. Uh, postponed, uh, unless someone wants to work on it and fix the, the unit test. Um, um, media updates. Uh, if someone could. Okay, I saw a discussion about um, media clones. I, I think it was about from Piedon and someone else. Uh, but I already asked Piedon to do something. Uh, there is a PR from um, from Jeff again. The same one, I think. Uh, yeah, I think he, he made it. So he made a PR to allow media updates. If someone could look at the PR and, and question it and comment on it or uh, see if it works and just to have a, a second uh, opinion on that, um, that would be fine if someone wants to take it. Uh, yeah, I think it basically boils down to uh, whether we want or don't want to have another method on our storage provider for copying files. No, not this one. This is not the same subject. So actually, I, I was mentioning the discussion on complex, but this PR is not about that. It's about okay. this PR is about being able to to uh, swap out a, um, a binary file against another one in the same media item. This is different. So you, when you edit a, a media item, you can select another media binary. Oh, see? I see. Okay. This is what the PR is about. Uh, this is different than cloning, exporting, importing, and cloning. Yeah. But this is another PR that I think we need for uh, one at eight. Uh, then this Piotr is here. You you haven't published pushed any branch yet. Um, no, nope. I have it on my local still. I have to integrate the changes that that have has been done in uh, in parallel because there were there were a few changes to workflow, so I need to integrate them. Any breaking change? No, no, no. <laughs> no. I mean, any API change or migration needed? No. Um, no, uh, the, the API of the workflow manager will be extended, uh, so there will be more events to handle, okay. on the, uh, but yeah, no breaking changes, I guess. Okay. We'll see. It's okay if we ship 108 without, it's not a, a promise we made, or so we, if, if we can't do it for 108, you just tell us so and we'll push it, we'll postpone it. Um, this, it was from Daniel, he still has some work to do. Um, I had, had it on Skype. Uh, include business caching module. So I have included the business data cache service, but I haven't included the distributed cache providers. Um, oh, did I? Shim uh, wanted one for Azure. And um, mem cache D. Is a question. Not sure. Um, okay, nothing new. Done. Okay. Um, Redis. Redis for. Uh, can we use this for caching? Can we do some lookups on the keys? Yes, uh, yes, for sure. Is is there a support for um, time spanning validation in Redis? Can we say put this key for? Okay. So well, this will be the same answer as for um, memcached. Do we want to include another external library in Orchard or not? Because it can be done as a as a module. We have a module for Azure already, so we could typically add a new feature with the same SDK that we are using today. Um, memcached and I will put Redis. At least we can do a module for that. On the gallery, at least. So if it makes sense. Um, 
the day memcached provides a developer in the Orchard Unchart community, yes, we will include the uh, memcached uh, in the core. Or until or when memcached is an outer curve project, it's okay. <laughs> Um, should we update the expected release date? It's still at November. No, no. Where is the expected release date? Oh yeah. Okay. So expected uh, February. <laughs> so let's change the date every month. Uh, so if we want to ship it this month, we have to push um, Zoltan and Benedict to work, okay? On useful things. Um, okay, 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 then. Uh, no demos today? Bertrand? Yeah. Yeah, hey, your computer is working? Yeah, I, I flattened it completely. I reinstalled everything. Notepad? <laughs> A command line tool and that's it? Well, Notepad would be faster than Visual Studio. <laughs> Can you do Control T in Notepad? No, not yet. It's a plugin. <laughs> not yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, go. Okay. Mm. I have no in, in, musical introduction for you. <laughs> you share? Are you? Um, I am. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to show today is um, the one stop layout uh, module. Uh, it's a module that enables you to create uh, rich layouts from the admin uh, without having to touch uh, placement and, uh, uh, or creating templates from for the theme uh, once you've done a little initial setup. Um, so the module is actually available on uh, Bitbucket. Um, and it even has some documentation, so I'm going to paste. The, yeah. If there is something in the chat, I'll tell you, okay? No, no, I'm I'm pasting something. Okay, but in case it's super slow. Link is a pig, even the desktop version. <laughs> so now it's no more Visual Studio. It's Link. No, it's always been Link plus Visual Studio. Now I got rid of the Visual Studio problem, but Link is still super slow. Uh, yeah, so we, we do have documentation, um, uh, quite a lot of it for for a module actually. Um, it's a regular uh, Orchard install, except that it has the one-stop uh, layouts module, uh, which adds two new uh, menu entries for layouts and templates. This could be simplified. Um, the, the, the idea is that you define a, a general layout with rows and columns uh, in the layout, and then uh, you use those layouts to create templates where you actually place elements inside of those layouts. Uh, so I'm going to create a new layout here. It was actually super fast uh, before I started sharing. Close link. <laughs> what? Close link. Yeah, I should just kill Link, and uh, that, that would make it super fast. Seriously. Open your task manager.
That takes time. And the task manager is not responding. I had the uh, same issues, you remember, uh, in, so in July. Uh, yeah, it's at 20%. It's actually, you know, it's it's reasonable. That should run fine. And the worker process is at zero point something. So I'm, I'm not really sure what's happening here. Um, uh, maybe like it was for me, because you see the CPU is more than what you actually have, actually. I don't know. What? The, the sum is not doing 50%. Is it? 25 20. No, you're yeah, wrong. Right. Yeah. Is... I had driver issues. They were th uh, generating yeah, maybe. too many well, interactions. Anyway. And... What is there? Yeah, uh, so let's see. Uh, so it's not a template, it's actually a layout here. Uh, so I'm going to add uh, one row here, and inside of that row, I'm going to add two columns. Uh, I could add more. It would just, you know, uh, uh, modify them as necessary. I can also change what um, the amount of space that they're each taking. So I'm going to do this, uh, two thirds, one third. And I'm going to save that. Hoping that it's not going to take forever. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a template based on that layout. Like that. Um, okay. So I'm choosing the layout that I just created and saving, and this is going to um, uh, import the the layout so that I can start placing elements inside of uh, of the rows and columns that I had. So here I can recognize the rows and columns that I had before. So I can, for example, take the first column and put a part in there. And to choose the body part. And then inside of the second column, I'm going to put a, a, an image element. Um, there is not much to configure here. OK. And uh, all this is going to be stored as a, you know, a, a, an XML representation. Uh, I mean, I could modify that stuff here and uh, see the changes, but uh, be back to eight and four here. So everything is interactive and reacting as I uh, as I do changes. Uh, usually, you don't have to touch the XML description, but it's. It's here, and you can use it to do cut and paste and stuff like that. Um, did I save? Yes. <clears throat> um, so the elements you can use, uh, you get uh, parts and fields, which enable you to do the same thing that placement is doing, but dynamically. Uh, you get images, uh, static text, links, and containers that uh, enable some pretty interesting uh, cases. You, you can actually use the container to uh, bring into your layout another content item. So, uh, uh, yeah. is, the, is the list of elements extensible? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's easier to build a new element than it is to build a part or something like that. Um, I don't expect that you will have to do that very often because you have the part and field uh, elements that uh, 
that, that should work for most of the cases. But yeah, you can. For example, uh, there is also a, a video element that exists. Uh, but yeah, you can. Um, so now what I need to do in order to be able to use that template is uh, actually uh, enrich my content definition for my pages uh, and uh, add a special part that, that is going to uh, uh, to bring the, the templates into the type. So here I hit content definition and I can either create a new uh, templated page type uh, yeah, which I will do, or I could uh, modify existing um, types to add the capability to them. You think it's a driver problem? Mm -hmm. If you use a diagnostic tool, you will see the you can log the uh, you know the interruptions, and you you will see it will be like USB or graphical okay. interruptions. Okay. And and it appeared only when I was sharing my screen, so it was. Oh, well, from that that yep. thing is really super fast. So that was when uh, when I was sharing the screen on Link and Skype. If I had two screens at the same time. Yeah, so the templated page type is going to be very similar to a regular page. It's going to have uh, common, notarout, body. Uh, it will have the templated item part, uh, which is the preferred part here. Okay. So, notarout, body. Plated item, title. Um, so when you place a body part element in the layout, <coughs> it will actually render the body part value at this position. Yeah. And the body part itself, which is an account item, won't be displayed by default? Well, it depends. If you take an existing content type that already has placement for okay. body, then you will have two copies of the body until you you neutralize it into your in your template. Actually, I I but, but, but right I now you create to do that. Okay, unless you use the <coughs> the new feature in Analytics, which is uh, the the filter on the match, where you can say if it has a templated item, don't display the bodies. Oh yeah, you have you have to tell me more about that. I'm I'm not sure exactly what that is, but yeah, that sounds in interesting. So it could be the, the default placement in your module could be if you have a templated part, body is hidden, title is hidden, and everything because you expect people to put it in the template. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I should do that definitely. Um, And this is so slow that, uh, yeah. I so what is nice here is uh, if we want to reuse that, you got already all the behavior working. I mean, the front the front end behavior, you got the serialization of the of the layout uh, or template, I don't know which one. Uh, um, what I'd like to see is a UI like in uh, Sidefinity where you drag and drop the, the things and you drag and drop the rows and columns. Yeah. And you resize them, you know, by just by resizing the colon and it's... Yeah, I'd like so that too. Uh, here you manipulate the, the template layout by... Yeah, know. so the, the UI is very nice for, for an engineer because you understand yeah. you understand what he's doing. Yeah. But I think the goal is more to... would be nicer to have it for a kind of end user who could... I agree. Uh, uh, for example, you, you saw how I resized the column. Yeah, it's, yeah uh, and the, the, the code is here, so I mean, you can do it because yes, you have it. Yes, it's yes, externalized. Yes, you, we you, you would want to grab the, the separation between the columns and, yep. and do it directly in the preview. But. Uh, you have extensibility too. Um, I was also envisioning that uh, you can... So the, the thing that you render in the template on the right, 
okay, in the, in the columns. Yeah. I see, I saw body part rendered. Mm -hmm. And I saw the image was just like a placeholder for an image. Maybe oh, just but, actually. Hold on. Uh, when you when you actually create that was the template editor so it doesn't know what is going to be in the body part right so it has nothing to give you a better uh preview than that but when you actually edit the content item okay, then it gives you uh, an actual light yep. uh, so of what you have this this item this what i would call snippet uh, in the templates will there is one for rendering an actual part. There are ones for rendering actual fields. Mm. Um, and uh, we could also have some which are actually just content. So I could just paragraph. Okay, let's place a paragraph and you yep. inline edit. Statement. Yes, and you inline edit the paragraph yep. from the admin again. Yes. Um, and it's live and you can even change this, the settings because you could have a property window instead of your stuff. You could have a property window. So we will still need a property window for specific elements, specific snippets like the color, the, the I don't know, things. But, but it's, <coughs> yeah. Uh, so we need a better editor in the admin, better in the sense more user friendly and user friendly and uh, 1.9. Yeah, so here is what you see when you edit one of those items. So the, the body part is still here. Mm -hmm. It has its editor. And this is the editor for the templated item. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, here you recognize our... our uh, oh. Yep. oh, wait. No, no, no. I didn't, I didn't configure the, the content type so that it uses my template here. Why? Uh, so... So uh, you, you, in the content definition, you can um, you can specify whether your content type uh, will be able to choose the template per item, or if you choose it once for the whole type. And the default is that you can change it. So I need to go in there and uh, and change the settings here. Okay. <clears throat> what about having a part name, template part, or layout part, or whatever? which will have to content type to actually manage the layout itself and its content. So you just drag and drop rows, columns, parts, yes. paragraphs. Yes, so creating your layout uh, directly from yes. the content item editor. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. That's one of the so, things we've, we've actually thought about and never uh, got to building. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, the, the, the main um, feedback, the main piece of feedback that, that we got from the customers on this was that uh, it was a little um, heavy to have to create a layout and a template and then uh, use that template. And they wanted to actually, in some cases, be able to just create it as they go. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I yeah, could see too much engineering in that, like Orchard, it's too much Orchard, okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, and also, but the reusability of templates is still useful. So uh, when I thought about the feature, I thought that when you are, while you are editing a content item with uh, its layout and content, you could say, oh, um, clone this. And you can actually, or save this as a template. And you can actually yes. copy the XML that you currently have. Mm -hmm as a template, you name it, and it's available like any other thing. So you could just drag and drop a template like you drag and drop a content part or you drag and drop a, a field and paragraphs. So it's part of the snippets, uh, available snippets. Um, yep. oh. and yeah. So that would be nice. Um, so yeah, we need once, you, once you have some contents, there is actually a preview that appears here on the side. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you have text elements, for example, you can type and you can actually see mm -hmm. the changes as you type. And... Yeah, I will already see this in the admin already. If uh, Well, it depends on the snippet. A snippet could be fully static and you click and it does a pop-up and all the snippet could just say, I'm uh, inline editable and you type in directly. So from this view, the layout will take the full size, the full, uh, the full width, uh, minus the menu, and uh, you could see the right. layout render actually. That will be fine. Mm -hmm. um, and it will even, I'm assuming, even be uh, real sized because uh, usually websites are a fixed size like 960 and the Orchard Admin is full size. So even the edit editing part, the editing zone, the wide zone here will be large enough to fit the website mm -hmm. and you will see the kind of the real rendering. And you can still preview it. So, yeah. yeah, so I, I don't want to inflict uh, too much pain on uh, people watching this. So. Um, I, 
I, I'd like to invite people to try it and uh, play with it if they're interested. Uh, the documentation can give you a, a good idea of what you can do. Um, uh, it, it's very uh, powerful. Uh, it's very extensible. Uh, and to give you an idea, um, the John Varvedos website uh, was built with it. So uh, the the homepage that has this uh, very rich uh, slideshow that is composed, you know, of many little uh, elements that that's actually uh, this module uh, doing it. So just even even going to JohnVarvedos.com takes forever. So it um, using the info set also, the, the shift will be interesting here because, well, I'm assuming you have an XML document, so it's there, everything is there, so everything right. should be there. Uh, this should be fast also. Uh, yeah, everything is XML driven here, so. Okay. It's not, it's not stored in the info set because it would be kind no, of. No, but, but it's, a, it's one XML document. XML. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Yeah. And we can always migrate if, migrate if we need, but. Yes. Not, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we will need some contributors, but I would like it to be a branch of the current module because uh, I think it can be done as an extension, as a, an evolution of the module so that it doesn't break your current customers with a big C, a big U and a big S and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it, it we, because I think it, it can be done as, a, as an evolution of the module, not, not a new module, because everything is here, actually. Well, you have lots of things inside, extensibility, serialization, um, and just changing the editor to make it more user-friendly. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that would be nice. Um, yeah. Um, and I would also satisfy Brett, because he doesn't want another module to be done. That's mm -hmm. why he open, he open source that. Yep. That's it. Thank you. Sorry, it was so slow. Uh, no. Too bad. Should I'll be awesome. experiment with other drivers before I inflict. So one dot nine will be awesome. We don't have one dot eight, uh, one dot eight yet, but uh, one dot nine yeah. will be awesome. Uh, yeah. Um, I had another. Um, uh, Proposal for uh, another idea for what what we can what we could do for tool. I told you about it. Uh, I think it's the number of modules that we have, the number of core modules that we have uh, is is kind of silly. Um, and there is a, a fair number of those modules that actually are core functionality that probably would be better in uh, in, in the core assembly. Um, so how about we think about uh, reducing the number of, of mm -hmm. modules that are in the module folder uh, in 2.0, for example? Um, that that would probably help a lot of aspects of, of our chart, like initial loading, uh, compilation, even loading the project in, uh, in Visual Studio, the solution. Um, so, yeah, we could also have a solution with some assemblies already pre-compiled. Like if we don't expect people, to, most people to change the framework and core, so we could also yeah. say framework and core are assemblies. And uh, there is another solution where you can work with, yeah. and uh, they are just packages. They are there. They are, you, there is no source code, so they are already compiled actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There are some options there. So uh, should we? How, how do we track these uh, ideas? Should we make? Uh, uh, let me check. Do we have our chart project up? Sorry. And do we have a release for that? For 2.0 and we could uh, have some IDs, uh, backlog for these IDs, this kind of breaking IDs. Uh, where are the releases? We have a 2.0 alpha tag uh, with 23 items. So maybe we can we can uh, file them on 2.0, Orchard 2.0 on Codeplex. There, is, there are just 23 items, so we can uh, uh, either remove those items, remake it in future, or delete them, so, so we can focus on a, on, a, on a nice list for 2.0 if we have some ideas so we don't lose them. So just to create the idea on, uh, on, on Codeplex under 2.0, uh, so we don't lose it. 
we'll review it someday. Um, just reading one of my one of the issues I oh no I didn't write it I, okay um, webs I, I have a meeting at one so I will uh, shut everything down at one I'm just I will just share my the, the new websites some new websites uh, where is my screen share button so this I'm pasting it in the chat room and I'm clicking on them okay only three ah so this one is already there this one Okay, school access empowering today's today's students to be tomorrow's innovators, leaders, and engage citizens. Okay, website. Okay, interesting. I'm not sure there's a service behind, but that's a nice uh, website. This is the. Um, Jalazel, Jalazel, Jalabel website of the week. On that today, this is a Chinese website. I don't know what it is about, but it's .gov.cn. That's interesting. Jalazel Oh yeah, thank you, Antoine. Uh, yep. So the government of China is working with Ultron. Good. Um, this one inspiresmart.com service business nice this one is interesting HP I don't know yet if it's a legitimate website meaning that we maybe you remember the the Walmart website for photography for photographs online which was actually not from Walmart it was kind of a phishing website so I I wish this is legitimate but I'm not sure um, and this one is I've already yeah we've already shown that okay that's the websites of the of the week. Uh, in, in, on the last five minutes, Ilan is is here. Ilan, news. So news. Uh, I've had a meeting with the with a guy for the Orchard Harvest Conference, which will be held in Seattle campus, um, Redmond campus. Um, so now we have filed some forms to have some quotes based on the number of people we would want to to host and uh, um, if we need video if we need catering everything so i just uh, filed a, a form and i'm helped by the guy a guy from the business here at microsoft to communicate with the service responsible for the organizing the events and uh, so just to have an idea of how much it will cost for us the good thing is that uh, the cost is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> in in like let's say uh, let's say we were paying around ten grand for the for the meeting rooms and hosting, like in the hotel in Santa uh, Santa Monica or in Europe, it was around let's say ten grand more or less, something like that. Here it will be more like five hundred dollars. <laughs> Uh, so it seems too cheap to be true but that's what they said for one or two hundred uh, people room 
Um, so that, so that, that's uh, that's uh, good news. So I'm, uh, it was just uh, an, uh, an I have just to have an idea if it's really feasible. So it's it's going on. I have filed some things and uh, I will uh, sync up with Elon to see uh, uh, how uh, how we can do that. Uh, but it's going on. I will have more info when the, we have some uh, feedback from the the form we filed and and uh, more detailed um, estimate. Uh, but that's good. I have I have the, the good contacts now. Uh, still no date. I just said it will be uh, on today's event at the end in the end of a week, and it might still change. So we don't know. That's it. Any question? So Ilan, yes, we sync up uh, offline, and uh, I'll tell you more. Good. So it will be. Two days only, definitely. Or uh, no, no, no. I just, I, I just okay. file uh, to ask for an estimate for two days. Yeah. Okay. If, if the room is three hundred dollars per day, we d we can do it on two months. It's okay. <laughs> Sounds good. So yeah. Um, yeah, and they also they will also have be able to provide catering and uh, and videograph and everything. So that that will be very um, interesting in terms of management because previously we had to find different providers and sync them and schedule them and pay them. And so here, if it's just one provider doing everything, that would be awesome too, with experience because yeah, it's uh, well they do it every day. Um, so that's cool. Uh, so more money to invite more people from this more more awesome speakers. Uh, and to make uh, parties. So it will be party every day now. <laughs> Piotr, prepare the check. <laughs> and Zoltan too, prepare the check too. <laughs> okay, um, that's it guys. I have to go to a meeting now at 1. Uh, triage for next week, double triage next week, two zero and uh, one dot whatever. Okay, thank you guys. Talk to you next week. Bye bye. Bye everyone.